Okay, so welcome to part two of the sequence of videos about uh, my dome automation project, where I'm using a motor and a computer to control the dome. Um, today, I was gonna show you the result of building the bracket and uh, making the motor work uh, after the last first part of the video. But um, the weather's been pretty bad. We've just finished this incredible August heat wave and it started to rain. So I thought I would uh, change tack and I'm going to move towards the uh, office. Uh, and uh, my office is above that building there, the garage, uh, and there's a, uh, an office above there. I just want to mention the fact that there is actually a, a lot of wires connecting the whole thing to the dome uh, and a local area network. So the actual dome is fully connected to my uh, the house and the office uh, broadband so uh, that's important to understand how things connect up later on but so I'll move into the office now and I will show you the building blocks and the concept of all the electronics that uh, are going to make up the dome controller. Okay, so in this section, I just want to explain the basic concept of the complete dome automation control system. All the bits and pieces you see here will be in the dome eventually when everything's built. And as you can see, I've represented the telescope here with this picture. And I've also represented the main control laptop uh, that I always use in the dome for controlling the telescope, for controlling the CCD cameras and the focusers and all the various gubbins that are needed to take uh, images of various objects in the sky. So this will remain as it is and it connects to the telescope with a USB cable as it always has. But um, th this is important, the fact that the laptop obviously is the expert at knowing where the telescope is at any one time and also how fast that star or that object is moving and how often the dome should be moved. So bear that in mind in, in the following discussion. So the new bits are going to be built into this new main control box, which I'll show you a bit more in real life later. And as you can see, I based the, the important part, the, the, the microcontroller inside is going to be based on the wonderful Raspberry Pi uh, single board computer. Now these things are fantastically powerful, easy to program and very low cost. You can buy one from anything about eight or nine pounds to just over 50 pounds, depending on the model. And, and this will run on the lowliest model because of uh, it, it, the demands not that great on the computing power. Now the Raspberry Pi will talk to this thing called an H-Bridge motor driver and I'll show you that as well. That is also a very low cost bit of electronics which is actually quite easy to develop but they're very cheap to buy. And this thing knows how to uh, supply uh, enough current and voltage to the motor that I showed you. Then this motor actually drives the dome round. And the Raspberry Pi uh, is great at uh, commanding H-Bridge motor controllers. It, it can uh, send a, a thing called a PWM signal and a direction signal to tell the motor how fast to move and in what direction to move. So that's a perfect combination. And I've also indicated over here that there will be some kind of position sensors and I will explain that in a bit more detail when I know myself what's going to happen there. And uh, these sensors will also uh, feed into the input output pins here on the Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi will uh, read the position of the dome and therefore it can know where the dome is and it can tell the dome to move. So. Um, the laptop, as I've explained, is the expert at knowing what needs to be done. And the laptop and the Raspberry Pi will talk over my local area network to each other. And there will be a Python program running here and a Python program running over here. And the laptop will send commands in a very simple protocol. I will explain that in full detail. And it will send commands and it will say, for example, uh, move such and such direction so many degrees so move in a forward direction uh, two and a half degrees and the Raspberry Pi will just make that happen uh, and and that's the basic concept um, and now I will show you some of the actual hardware and where I am in the development of all of this. So here we are back in my office um, here above the garage and uh, it's where I do all my work and um, 
I just want to show you the basic uh, hardware setup as it currently stands so you can actually see for yourself the bits and pieces that I'm using and this is going to be or is the main control box it's just a, a plastic box from RS Components uh, very nice quality uh, not too expensive and this little lot of electronics here is going to go inside that box now it looks a bit complicated but it really is not uh, this is a simple 24 volt power supply uh, powered directly from the mains and that mains will be the only cable main you know the main power cable coming in to the box through a grommet um, this is the raspberry pi raspberry pi requires 5 volts so here is a little uh, 24 to 5 volt regulator module again very low cost and that supplies power to the raspberry pi the raspberry pi is connected to the local area network which goes off to my router and of course the computers are connected there as well um, so here is the little uh, h-bridge controller which is connected directly to the motor here uh, as you can see and I've just brought the motor in from the dome for the minute and the H-Bridge controller uh, is again very low cost this particular one absolutely excellent uh, easily drives this motor and it was £11.50 so cheaper to buy than it is to build yourself and the only connections uh, for, a lot of the connections are for other experiments I'm doing but um, the only connections from the Raspberry Pi the IO port to the motor three wires, ground, uh, a direction logic pin, and also the PWM, the pulse width modulation square wave, which you can program, and that will uh, make the H-Bridge controller drive the motor at different speeds and obviously change the direction. So that's the basic setup. Um, and just to show you that things do work, uh, what you could do is, because the Raspberry Pi is on the network, you can actually uh, run uh, the, and look at the Raspberry Pi on your computer and I've got a little program here a few lines of code and I'm just going to run that and what those uh, lines of code do is um, drive step the motor up through different speeds and oops sorry about that my finger in the way and um, then it changes the uh, direction and uh, it doesn't actually make that much noise it's just it's vibrating on there we go is vibrating on the um, workbench there so it's stepping the speed up and it's stopped and it's going the other direction and it's going slow and faster it's stepping up 10 percent and uh, just to illustrate that the little python program that's running on the raspberry pi is able to control the motor um, with just a few lines of python code and obviously later on I will go into more details about the code uh, for anyone that's interested. So, um, so this is the uh, this is the, the the basic summary of the motor control part uh, of the project so far. So I hope you found that informative.